हेलो वेलकम टू दी कैम ट्यूटोरियल सीरीज यूजिंग फ्यूजन 360 टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी एन एग्जांपल ऑन कंटूर मिलिंग व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज प्रोफाइल मिलिंग एंड दिस इज द डायग्राम व्हिच वी विल बी क्रिएटिंग दिस इज द डायग्राम व्हिच वी विल बी क्रिएटिंग द मॉडल व्हिच वी विल बी क्रिएटिंग एंड देन वी विल कैरी आउट द प्रोफाइल मिलिंग ऑपरेशन टू machine this particular part out of the constructed raw material work piece so i'll create a new part over here in the cam milling series yeah and i'll i'll save this in cam tutorial series as contour milling work so i'll be first creating the required sketch and these are the dimensions so i'll start from this point then it is 10 and total 30 on that side then 35 i guess below then 40 in this direction then somewhere below and then i'll first join it with this okay remaining stuff we can create then now we'll create this r10 r so for that you can use circle method or the r10 is required so r10 is diameter 20 20 mm diameter and the distance from is also 10 and i can use a trim for trimming this out yeah that's it then one more circle i will create which is of or you can also create it using an arc so center point arc something of this kind and can give 
radius as 5 okay but when we give radius 5 okay for these arcs as you can see it distorts okay so it's better to create them using the fillet command okay, so fillet command would ask you what is the radius so radius you can easily mention over here as 5 mm and that's it so the top part is created then from this point it is 15 in and then we have one more circle over here so I'll draw a random circle at this point of time and then I'll start specifying the dimensions so this distance is 15 and 15 is the end distance so what we want is the R13 so instead we can we can get rid of this distance what we can do is we can first dimension the radius it is R13 they have set so it should be 26 the diameter and then the distance that we want to give what we can do is mm plus 13 that is 28 yes and then we can trim this unwanted part likewise then similarly 28 and then R12 so one more circle somewhere here and the dimension is 12 so that is 24 and the distance between them is so this is 28 from here so what we can do is either you can give it in this way or there is another way first we can trim and then we can give this distance as 28 in this way and then we have remaining distance as 30 so we will keep it as 30 and this will extend we have this distance given as 40 and from this to this the distance comes out to be 80 then we have this distance from this point to this point this distance is 80 and the height is given as 45 so then we will mention the height the draw the entire sketch becomes the uh, constraint sketch okay fully defined so as far as the dimensions are concerned we have created the required sketch okay and it is fully defined so i'll just come out of the sketch mode i'll extrude this in a downward direction by amount 20 so minus 20 in the downward direction okay now one more thing which we have done over here which is incorrect is this one the circle which we want to keep okay is not this one but the other one so instead okay i'll first get rid of this i'll again draw the circle
and give the dimension as 24 and then this dimension should be 12 in this way and then I'll trim the this part yes that is what we are looking at okay so that's okay the warning it is showing that one of the constraint was removed but that's okay this is the sketch that we have created so now I'll first save this user saved method and then I'll go into the manufacturing environment the first thing that I will try to do is set up the case with the required stock size as you can see and before that I will select the machine so I'll select this Autodesk generic 5 axis head operation type is going to remain as milli orientation will be model orientation okay stock box point or I can also give selected point as origin so I'll mention this selected point as origin or also you can say model box origin or stock box origin stock box origin if you say the origin goes to the center okay you can say model origin okay so model origin is a more uh, can say convincing method because we have started creating the sketch from the origin so model origin always will uh, select the base origin of the part okay so that is as far as the uh, setup of the machine and setup of the coordinate system is concerned now we'll come to the stock setup so as far as stock setup is concerned okay right now we are looking at the stock to be in excess as far as the uh, side dimensions are concerned that is xy dimensions are concerned so we would require stock we won't require stock top offset okay we are not going to do any uh, face milling right now okay of course we will be learning face milling in the coming uh, days stock side offset we will try to increase it to let's say up to 3 mm or to be more precise yeah 4 mm we have excess uh, 4 mm stock in terms of x and y direction and that is what we will try to remove when we carry out the uh, corresponding contour milling cycles and this is the post process so here i will give program number as 2001 program comment is going to be contour milling and that's about it I'll say ok over here and then I will come here and do a right click you can go from here for the uh, new operation 2D milling 2D contour or from here also you can select 2D contour or 3D contour whatever we are looking at so it's better to come here and select the operation typical operation so it is 2d contour now the first thing that is required is tool selection okay first thing required is tool selection so we'll select the tool for 
of milling okay and we will be looking for flat end mills of let's say diameter 10 mm or 12 mm would be sufficient for us so we'll go with 10 mm flat end mill and we'll select the uh, material with which we are working so i'll say uh, high carbon steel roughing okay high carbon steel roughing and i'll say select so this is a tool that we have selected of course the coolant is going to be flood type coolant coolant is going to be flood type coolant so high carbon steel is the preset material which we have selected spindle speed surface speed ram speed cutting feed rate feed per tooth then lead in feed rate lead out feed rate ramp feed rate plunge feed rate and feed per revolution so all these values will be taken the default values because we have switched on the material and accordingly the tool has been selected so these default values if we want if we have values with us from some other calculations we can change these values because these fields are active fields we can modify them so it is very convenient i'll go to the geometry now how we are going to select the geometry that is a real part so see contour selection the cursor is already on the contour selection so as it says select any face edge or sketch to define the machining boundary select of selecting a face creates tool paths on all the edges use edge selection for areas with holes or pockets on the face and selecting the lower edge will automatically set the reference for the cutting depth so it's always beneficial to select the edges and the edges are going to be selected in a manner if we are going to uh, dig into the part so the bottom edges will be the better choice always so i'll select the bottom edge in this particular manner okay i have uh, here it has been given as tangential extensional distance okay may not be required okay this is a direction of the tool okay this is a direction of the tool so this will decide uh, which uh, g code i will be using so let's say if my workpiece uh, stays on the right hand side and my uh, tool uh, moves around the workpiece in a clockwise manner okay, in a clockwise manner uh, then it is a g41 okay, it is a g41 so g41 is a uh, tool diameter compensation okay from the right uh, direction and the uh, direction is going to be the clockwise direction so this particular arrow uh, so tells us that the workpiece uh, is on the right hand side and tool is on the left side of the workpiece and the direction in which it is going to trace the workpiece is clockwise direction then stock contours okay i guess stock contours are not required okay uh, we'll see whether in a tab Yeah, these are some of the advanced options which we can we can see in the uh, coming side coming set of uh, lectures okay wrap tool path tool orientation okay tool orientation by default is is uh, z axis okay so uh, we don't have to select anything over here okay select z axis plane and x axis uh can say model orientation here as well and model origin for this also so that confirms the tool orientation okay we'll go into the uh the different heights so retract height i will say increase up to 15 mm Okay, the clearance height okay clearance height i will keep it as 20 mm retract height i will keep it as 10 mm okay feed height let it be 5 mm okay, okay then 
top height is stock top the bottom height is can say selected contour okay and we don't want any offset for it and that's about it then number of passes as far as the depth is concerned so as we can see sideways compensation is left so climb milling as i told you okay it is going to be the climb milling example compensation is in computer compensation minimum cutting radius okay what do we mean by that okay so let's say if it is set to zero okay, we might end up having a situation of this kind so now since we are not dealing with any inside geometries okay so we will not have any value for this so the tool path is forced into all inside sharp corners basically it is used for uh, inside geometries so now we are going to machine this workpiece from the outside so we are not going to uh, switch on any value for this let it be zero then finishing smoothing also uh, the maximum amount of smoothing applied to the finishing passes use this parameter to avoid sharp corners in the tool path okay now we have some sharp corners over here so that is why we will not use this uh, finishing smoothing option as well okay finish feed rate we have multiple finishing passes so number of finishing passes i will keep it as let's say uh, two and with this step over distance as let's say 0.5 mm. finish feed rates let it be this okay uh, lead on all finishing passes then uh, finishing overlap is not required lead end distance is also not required outer corner mode roll around corners so it is going to try and uh, roll around the corners as far as possible okay so there are three options outer corner mode setting lets you your machine outer corners in three different ways so roll around corner keeps contact with the corner throughout the motion Keep sharp corner, continue, continues the tool path to a single point corner, losing contact with the material temporarily and keep sharp corner with loop, similar to keep sharp corner but also performs a horizontal lead out and lead in at the corner. So, we want sharp corner, so we'll opt for the uh, third option and will switch on the roughing passes so maximum step over for the roughing pass i will keep it as let's say 4 mm and smoothing deviation 0.1 let it be there and number of step overs the total number of cuts to make for this tool path so let's say i'll, I'll have this as say 4 okay let us go with some random numbers at this point and then we'll see in a simulation what exactly happens multiple depths okay depth of cut the total uh, maximum roughing step down is basically 20 mm okay finishing step downs not required because we are going to do a contour milling from sides we'll approach along the wall okay we don't require stock to leave anywhere because again it is a uh, stock to leave radial stock to leave axial stock to leave okay we will not use this option right now then we have smoothing option so smoothing tolerances we will also not use it right now and feed optimization so in all these operations okay feed optimization is something which we can use okay, reduced feed distances so specifies the distance to reduce the feed before a corner so that's okay when we have corner corners to maintain then this operation will be helpful and linking parameters high feed rate mode uh, preserve rapid movement then allow rapid retract safe distance is 21 okay keep tool down okay maximum stay down uh, distance is let's say 
50 mm and lift height is let's say by how much height uh, the, the tool will be lifted again very useful for inner uh, geometries and not that useful for outer geometries yeah of course we can use a uh, lead in that is the entry horizontal lead in and uh, lead out exit and there are no ramps okay there are no ramps then there are no pre drill positions and uh, entry position if you want to select you can select this as the entry position so i'll say okay to this okay so we have successfully set up the uh, model now what we will do is yeah this is the tool path that that it showcases to us and as you can see this is the part that will eventually be cut okay that will eventually be cut and since we have sharp corners also but sharp corners are not possible external uh, uh, sharp corners uh, of this kind will will be possible but wherever it has to uh, it has to perform the uh, turn okay in this manner then sharp corners are not possible because the uh, nominal radius which which will be left on the workpiece is equal to the radius of the tool so these uh, geometries cannot be sharply machined it will have certain fillet radius equivalent with the tool radius same is the case with this but some of the outer corners are possible say for example this corner also so what we will do is we will simulate this yeah so it starts the motion from the outside okay, now why this happens this happens because we have a uh, offset tool path uh, generation that happens and that is the reason why it is going slightly beyond okay where you won't find you necessarily won't find workpiece presence but it has these corners to machine entirely so that is the reason why it goes there that is how it is completing the uh, machining for this particular part and it, it does it with uh, ease basically so I'll close this simulation environment okay, there are few warnings so enable feature flags setup sheet viewer tool library v4 release smoothing is not applied for keep sharp corners mode generation completed with one warning so it says smoothing should also be applied okay so what we can do we can apply smoothing which we did not apply in the first case if you come here so smoothing should also be applied that is what the error says or the warning says so smoothing can be applied feed optimization we have gone ahead with okay, we can switch off feed optimization we don't want stock to leave on the walls and floors Okay, and entry positions we can get rid of the entry position and just see how it performs the task now we have modified the tool path or rather settings and we'll again see by simulating how it performs
okay performs now there are no depth of cuts given we can also switch on depth of cut option the plate thickness was only 20 mm this is the final finishing pass it is carrying out yeah so since plate thickness is only 20 mm so depth of cut was not mentioned but we can still mention some depth of cut and we can work with depth of cut now the next thing that is required is post process click on post process and here i am going to go ahead with let's say fanuk normal fanuk okay 2001 contour milling and let it save at at the uh, default location i'll just say post process 2001 i'll say contour milling okay, once we post process this it is going to open it in in a nc text editor on this machine i have autodesk uh, nc viewer yeah so this is the program it is contour milling machine vendor autodesk it's a very big program naturally because okay five almost five to six passes we are doing so every time it has to go back and instruct the tool to follow the tool path and after each pass the tool is coming more uh, near to the final uh, can say tool path which we we selected okay so it first in initial passes it runs on the offset tool path and then for the final path the final pass it it is uh, coming in contact with the actual uh, dimension that is required so that is why the program length is almost how much it is 454 lines it's a very big program as you can see all the details are mentioned accordingly so g90 we are working with absolute mode g17 xy uh, position that is xy plane g49 and g40 and g80 so initially we are cancelling all the compensations and can cycles then resetting the uh, home position and with g90 then changing the tool to t tool number 1 setting up the spindle speed 1940 and m08 is the flat type coolant then with left uh, cutter compensation that is uh, g43 okay we are starting up with the uh, we are starting up with the that is g43 is for the uh, left direction uh, compensation okay compensation direction left okay so this is what i had to show i hope you have understood and stay tuned for more such interesting and uh, different kind of uh, geometries for uh, computer aided manufacturing uh, using autodesk fusion 360 till then thank you very much